What is going on, ODQ Galaxy? This is your girl Cindy G here. I am one third of ladiesofnodq.com. Joining me here we have is your future wrestling trivia challenge champion, medium cast, and the simple man of nodq.com, Noah Foster. And today's video, this is going to be the review video for not just one, but two New Japan Pro Wrestling shows. First one is going to be about Wrestle Kingdom 13. And second, it's going to be the review of New Year's Dash, which is the aftermath of Wrestle Kingdom 13. And I must say, guys, I feel that this year has been a pretty good start of 2019. Even though we have all the titles has been switched, like holy crap. But the question is, do you guys remember the last time New Japan Pro had like all the titles switched, like mainly Russell Kingdom? I honestly don't. You probably have to go back to when there was only a couple titles and they might have done it. I, I'm, a, I'm uncertain about that. Right. Yeah, I mean, well, no DQ Galaxy, comment down below when it, which one is the last time New Japan will have any, all the title switches, like either from Russell Kingdom or past shows as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and start off with the review for Russell Kingdom 13. So the, the pre-show match we have is the gauntlet match to determine the number one contender shift for the never six-man tag team championship match, which the current champ was Bullet Club consists of the good guy Tama Tonga, <laughs> Tonga Loa, and Taiji Ishimori. So the following participate are you have is the team of Suzuki Gun, which is Minoru Suzuki and Killer Elite Squad versus the Elite, which is Marty Scrawl, Hangman Page, and Yujiro Takahashi with Peter and Chase Owens versus the team of Jeff Cobb, Dave Finley, and Yushi Nagata versus the team of Ryusuke Takuchi and most violent players versus the team of Chaos consists of the team of best friends, Beretta and Chucky e. T. And forgive me, I keep forgetting that one wrestler's name, so <laughs> pardon my friend. <laughs> it's been a long night and all that stuff, so... Hiroki Goto. Hiroki Goto. Thank you so much, Kaz. <laughs> all right. Is that all the teams from it, from the pre-show? Yeah, I feel like yes. that took up half our review, just naming all those teams. I know. And as this team, men. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. So as a disclaimer, you guys, we are trying our best to pronounce any of the Japanese wrestlers' first and last names. So please bear with us, as always. I must say, um, this pre-show match turned out to be like an elimination match. Like, it has some pretty good spot to it, but I feel that it was kind of like running a little bit of its course as well. And to be honest, it was kind of very predictable, like on like the first part where, of course, the elite got eliminated first by Team Ka, Finley, and Nagata. Of course, and then you have is chaos joining in, and then they got eliminated, which is surprisingly enough, thanks to Finn, not David Finley. Sorry, long night as always. And then you have is Suzuki Gun, which of course, Team Nagata, Cobb, and Finley got eliminated by Suzuki Gun, thanks to KES. And then so I went down to the team of. Ryusuke Takuji and most violent players and surprisingly enough this is really sad to say is uh, team most violent players and Takuji won the number one contendership so we all got it wrong to see at least I mean even though they have like the most like comedic present to it but they somewhat has some uh, all right spot to it so let's go ahead and start off with you Cass what do you think of this pre-show match overall it it just kind of felt like it was there and i think i still would have preferred a rumble but uh throw all those guys in there there's a bunch of guys in there that should have done the main card there was that interview with uh, suzuki after where he said it was embarrassing that he was even on the pre-show mm -hmm. <laughs> um like the elite were pretty much i'd say buried just to um just to put over the fact that uh chase owens and the tokyo pimp were 
didn't like them anymore, so they which led into what happened the next night in New Year's Dash. Yep. But other than that, like, it, and I find it made a, a lot of guys look uh, really weak, and it just really didn't do anything for anyone. It, it, skippable if you're rewatching it. It's very skippable. I agree. Like, I actually feel sorry for the whole Suzuki Gun crew, let alone chaos itself that they're in this particular kickoff pre-show match. Well, I don't even call it a kickoff pre-show match because they started at, lo and behold, the time that the whole New- Russell Kingdom 13 show is supposed to start. So, I mean, it is what it is. I just hope next year we'll get the whole Battle Royal back like it's supposed to be like every year. But, I mean, it is what it is to say at least. Noah, what do you think so far? Because I know he- you choose originally Suzuki Gun. Yes, uh, yeah. I did. And I already knew their dismay the fact they were on this show. They look like the strongest coming in, and they definitely were, in my opinion, the strongest coming out. Kind of disappointed they lost. I thought it was a pretty good match. It's always fun spots when you got um, Killer Elite Squad and Minoru Suzuki, who, of course, before they even got in the ring, what do they do? Cause chaos, no pun intended, and just beat the daylights out of the freaking opposing team. And then Yano, I find, is very entertaining, but I was bloody shocked when that team won. But congrats to them. It was a pretty good match overall, but nothing truly memorable. Exactly. Like, honestly, I'm not going to remember, like, what's going on with the match and all that since I've already been forgetting about that. Like, yeah, but speaking of which, we're going to talk more about the aftermath later on at New Year's Dash with everything that's going on with pretty much all the teams as well. So moving right along, and before I get into that, I have like the poll results like I did create it on Twitter, see what you guys voted who's going to be the winner. Even though Twitter has been a stupid idiot for having limitation of poll results, so I have to put... Comment down below if you vote for the elite or say the elite. So, no comments from the elite, but for the results are 11% Team Nagata, Calm, and Finley. 11% Team Takuji and Most Violent Players. 22% Chaos. And 56% voted Suzuki Gun to be the one that was originally for the win. So, I mean, it is what it is. I just hope that there's going to be like a right way to do it. But like I said, we're going to explain to it later when we get to the new year's dash as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on here. So next up you have is the never open weight championship match, which you have is the champ Kota Ibushi versus Will Ospreay. Oh my God. What a good way to start of the match where Will Ospreay, is the one that started going at it to Ibushi and then a Bushi counter. Now, Noah, go ahead and explain what happened. Uh, <laughs> my notes don't do it justice. Holy cow, what a match. Like you said, super fast exchange. Both men kicks, flips, misses. It was a test of speed and who could take the worst from the other. There was exchanges of slaps and kicks. I mean, just looking at some of the spots here, you, of course, had your classic uh, springboard missile drop kick. There was um, Spanish fly. There was a mm-hmm. series of flurries throughout the match. There was uh, last ride powerbomb. Oh, yeah. There was, um, oh, my goodness, the Robertson special. There was multiple ox cutter counters, straight jacket, German suplexes, Stormbreaker, Brain Busters, and then, of course, that one spot that was very debilitating to me and kind of told the direction the match was going to end with. But overall, this match, I thought it was going to deliver it. It did on all fronts, and I hope to see those two face each other again very soon. I agree. I mean, that match was pretty by far amazing, especially that one part where after Ibushi did the last ride, Powerbomb yep. to Will Ospreay. You can see like how the camera zooms in and you can see Ospreay's facial expression. Like it had me dying <laughs> throughout that. The camera helped tell this story. Mm-hmm. Something other companies should really work on. Or <laughs> WWE. But um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Oh, wow. Well. Uh, anyway, it, it, everything just worked here. Koda, Abushi, the ref, the commentators, the camera. This match was beautiful on all fronts. I don't know what the hell Dead Meltzer is going to say because who listen to that guy? Is but that... I gave it five stars. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Cass? Well, I think we knew going into the predictions that these guys were pretty much going to kill each other. And they mm-hmm. kind of... <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Uh, I mean, that last final blow was just... Uh, like, I know you want to protect them, but, like, how do you protect a elbow to the back of the head? Oh, And I must yeah. say that, based on uh, Osprey and Zack Sabre Jr., Brit- Brits make great assholes. We're playing an asshole. <laughs> it's, it's the blatant truth, but that match on... Oh, you're going to get so one of the best matches of the night. <laughs> I mean, it's all based on the personality, you know, for that. And that's what Cass mentioned it. Yes, um, Osprey did to- took a huge blow to Ibushi by hitting him with his back elbow, followed by he did the Stormbreaker. One, two, three. Will Osprey is your new Never Open Me Championship match, which all of us, we all got it wrong again. But... Oops. I underestimated how hungry Osprey was to win that title to being out of wrestling for a period of months and how much he idolized facing Ibushi. So, again, I don't take back my decision in picking Kota because both men delivered on all fronts. The only thing I care about at this point, I hope Kota's okay. Agree. So, by the time of the recording of the video, New Japan Pro Wrestling did issue a statement that Ibushi is suffer a concussion. So... There'll be more updates later on coming from New Japan Pro Wrestling, but also updates from NoDQ.com. So stay tuned for the following updates for Ibushi. Hopefully, he'll recover quickly and get back into action, and then we'll see what's going to be the future for him as well, which we'll get into yeah. that. All right? And I about the, his chin on the ring post, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. And is there anything else you guys want to add in? Good. All right. All Long. right, so for the poll results for for the general No DQ Galaxy audience, so people voted 38% Ibushi to retain and 63% for Osprey to be the new champ. So congratulations, you guys, whoever picked Osprey. Yeah. Well, and, I'm um, not a group. Yeah, I know it's sad. But anyway, <laughs> let's. Go ahead and move on here. So next up we have is the three-way match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match, which you have the team of the champ, Suzuki Gun, consists of El Desperado and Yoshinoa Katamaru versus the team of Rapongi 3K, showing y'all with their hype man, Rocky Romero, versus LIJ, Bushi and Shigo Takagi. Now, I feel this match was pretty off to a pretty interesting start to say at least. Even though I'm kind of like a fan of Rapongi 3K's um, interesting because I would have thought Rocky Romero is like very talented, spinning the bars. I mean, we'll see like a future rap battle, but time would tell. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so. I just feel this match is like somewhat of a rush, but there's like a pretty much a pretty good spot to it. Like you have this Ken Morrow did kick Bushi off the ring and then Sho did the double suplex to to um, Nick um, Shingo and and you know, by accident to say at least so. And then you saw um, Tagage did the double um, pumping bomb to Sho and Yo. So Every pretty much you see everybody's going at it to Shingo because of his weight advantage, to say at least so. Mm-hmm. But then again, Tagage did the last of the of the his finisher. Right. He won by pinning show, and Lij is your new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. Cass, what do you think so far? Since you're the one that picked. L.I.J. Well, all of us did, but yeah. but you. Yeah. You know, when there's a new guy coming in, you kind of want to, you know... I've noticed New Japan does this a lot in title matches, say for Jay White last year. It's just, all right, these guys are going to debut right before Wrestle Kingdom. Boom. Title. Mm-hmm. So, And they got to make Shingo look strong, and that's exactly what they did. He threw around some guys that are much lighter than him and picked up the victory and walked away with those junior tag titles. I mean, it'll be nice if he ever does, so say if Hiromu comes back and moves Shingo up to the heavyweights, mm-hmm. he, he do really great there. I agree. I mean, it is a pretty good start for Shingo just to start off with the junior heavyweight and then they just slowly work his way to the heavyweight division, just per se. But um, 
when it's going to happen, I would say let's get them in the summer. But, yeah. yeah. What do you think, Noah? I thought it was a pretty good match. You basically described the what I was going to say about Shingo because, again, he basically was the showcase here because of his uh, strength and weight advantage. Mm -hmm. I thought there was also a fun spot where um, there was Satori Whiskey and Black Mist trying to come together. <laughs> and super kicked for their uh, sake. But, uh, yeah. And, of course, we had a uh, Noshigami Bomber and uh, Last of the Dragon, and that was it. They won. So we all call that right. <laughs> awesome. And then for, like, the poll results here is you have his 12% viewed voted Suzuki Gun to retain, 35% voted LIJ as new champ, and 53% voted Rapongi 3K to be the new um, champ, which it didn't happen. But everything we're going to explain about what's happening afterwards will lead to what happened at New Year's Dash. So we're going to move along to the next match, which personally is one of my top three um, match of the night, which is the Revolution Pro Wrestling British Heavyweight Championship match, which you have is the champ Tomohiro Ishii versus Zack Sabre Jr. Wow, guys. We all agree it was a pretty brutal match, to say at least. Take it away, Cass. Well, I'm getting kind of vibes from when uh, Ishii and Shibata had that match three, three years ago where they beat the crap out of each other. Mm -hmm. And... Just the way, like, Saber stretches people, just, it, it makes my bones hurt watching it. <laughs> <laughs> all those, like, headbutts and the, oh, everything's just so stiff. I'm just, I just cringe thinking about it, but I called this one wrong. Uh, I should have known better than to doubt, because, you know, they had, to, they had to make up for Suzuki Gun being on the pre-show and losing, so mm -hmm. you, somebody might as well go over for the group. But, uh, yeah, it was hard-hitting battle, and I love those, like, just smacking them around matches. It's it's great. I know, right? I mean, you saw, like, pretty much counter back and forth, especially with Zach like, trying to put, like, a really brutal submission maneuver to Ishii, but then he didn't counter. And then you saw this one moment where Ishii did the suplex on the top rope till Zach did um, counter, and then that's when he stopped his arms. Pretty brutal, to say at least. And then you saw, like, a lot of, like, arm twisting from Zach and Sue. It's kind of like, I was, like, holding my arms. It's like, holy crap. This is, this is like, the most brutal match that we all even predicted it as well. And then you mentioned a lot of headbutts going on. And, yeah. And so, Noah, can you take it away what's happening afterwards? Like, during, like, leading up to the finish. Oh, I was leading up to the finish? I mean, well, first off, Zach... Did not beat him within 60 seconds as he said he would. Mm -hmm. This match went much longer. Yes. Look at, I mean, going up to this, I mean, what else can you say? There was chops. There was, they were challenging each other for, oh, can you take this? I mean, at one point, he was kicking him pinpoint in the spine, and Tomohiro was like, oh, whatever. But, I mean, there was power bombs. There was kick out. There was a rude naked, sliding lariat, another cover fall on that. He had knee strikes, a guillotine. Oh, what they call it, like a hurrah or something like that. But, anyway, the match ended with... A freaking insane double octopus mm -hmm. where he had no room to move. The only thing he could do is speak to make the man stop. So, I mean, there's your finisher right there. You all described the, the rest of the match pretty much in full. Yeah, Zach. Wow. Yes, that is right, people. Zach Sabre Jr. is your new Ref Pro British Heavyweight Champion, and he's officially the most title ring with three times as the British Heavyweight Champ. So, Holy crap. I'm very happy for Zach. I'm really looking forward to how they're going to bring this title, like, you know, with the whole excursion that's going on, especially New Japan, like, partnering up with Rev Pro and then other um, major indie companies to say it. so. But, yeah. The yeah. Rev Pro title has kind of replaced the uh, ROH title for being, like, the title that's on the line outside company at oh. WrestleGate. Oh, yeah. And Zach already mm -hmm. said that he's willing to defend against anyone and anybody. But if Ishii wants his rematch, he has to do it on his home turf now in England. Exactly. But we'll see what's going to happen next. So, oh, yeah. for the results on the Twitter poll, so 22% voted Ishii to retain, while... 78% voted Sabre Jr. to be the new champ. So I guess 
this is like how it end up to be but yeah so i'm looking forward to what's gonna be like the future hole for saber jr since he is very strong and plus i like how makanabe is the one that's in doing the intro for zach saber jr like his own ring announcer so it has like a n- nice touch to it yeah but yeah anyway let's go ahead and move on here so we have it's the three-way match for the iwgp tag team championship match which you have is the champ Girl of Destiny consists of Tonga Loa and the good guy Tama Tonga <laughs> <laughs> with Fale and Jado versus the Young Bucks versus LIJ's Evil and Sonata. Now, Noah, can you start and take, um, take it away? First off, awesome new theme. This yes. good guy thing is freaking hilarious. <laughs> and, I mean, it was funny out of the gate when he was like, hey, good luck, good luck. And he tagged evil and said oh bleep that was funny out of the gate but um yeah i mean you saw at the very beginning what was going to happen here young bucks were the first target matt getting wiped out by this history of uh back issues by uh mm-hmm. evil and then mostly the match was uh tama and gorillas of destiny but um it really came forward when uh sonata came into play there was a uh, super bar bar attempts there was a super kick party of mm-hmm. course which you always get a young bucks yep. match I mean, you had a step up top rope, Herc Rana. We had um, Tonga Twist. We had Magic Killers. We had um, what's what's the guy with the candlestick? G- G- Yato. Jado. Jado. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I could I couldn't think of his name. And I mean, in the end, uh, we had let's see, Paradise Lock, which is always hilarious, aka the what they call the Rock Romero Special. Um, there was a little bit of tag team tandem between a couple of the teams during it. There was a 450 splash in Sonata at some mm-hmm. point by, I think it was Nick. I always get Nick and Matt confused. It was Nick. Okay. In the end, though, Magic Cure Moonstar combination gave LIJ the win. I thought it was a pretty good match. I agree so as well. I did not expect LIJ to win back their, their tag team titles after so long. Like, honestly, I thought G.O.D. is going to be the one to retain because now that you have is Tonga... To be like, oh, I am the good guy and say on Twitter, I apologize for like the beef that I caused. No hard feelings. I'm I'm a changed man. I was like, come on I'm now. Sorry. You know something sorry. is up with Tama Tonga, even though he is promoting the Bullet Club block party, which has happened to be the same day as WrestleMania 35. <laughs> <laughs> so how funny. ironic is that it is but you know that is something that is up with Tama Tonga especially with the long haul with Bullet Club to say at least so overall with the match I thought it was a pretty good one especially that one spot where Evil did like a brutal clothesline to I would yeah to Matt so hard like on the yeah, ramp on the, on yeah the also there was a crazy Tower of Doom spot yeah holy crap nobody wins in that mm-hmm Exactly. So, yeah, I'm, well, at least LAJ is now the new champ, even though it is a better sweep for the Young Bucks since this is their final New Japan Pro appearance, to say so. But, yeah, so, anyway, sure. yep. And besides, I like the G.O.D.'s new theme better than their own theme, but that's just my opinion. And, and the good guy is rocking out during it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, funny. Cass. What do you think the match since you're the one that choose LIG for the win? You, you never got to doubt the guys that win the World Tag League. Now, two years in a row, they win the World Tag League. Two years in a row, they win the titles at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. I, I just really, like, after looking over the card, that's why I picked LIJ to go for the clean sweep because, you know, there's dissension and chaos. Bullet Club is trying to get themselves back together. I just really feel like LIJ is going to be the... Uh, the, the leading stable in New Japan this year, and I think this is the perfect way to kick it off. But that the match, it was you know the Young Bucks like going out party it didn't mm-hmm. last very long, which yeah. you know kind of kind of sucked for them. But it, it'll happen, and you know the um, the Tongans still have the uh, the, the six man titles, which we'll get into later mm-hmm. on uh, our next review. Oh yeah, part two of this mm-hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> it, it just became time to, you know, put the titles back on LIJ because they're going to be your new, like, carrying team of, like, the, the old, old reliable, if you will. <laughs> exactly. So, 
everything that will be happening will be fall into the New Year's dash. Again, we'll get into that in just a minute, which I know we're going to say we're going to get into that in a minute so many times. So just bear with us. Yeah. Drink every time you say we're going to get to it in a minute or the good guy. Yes. <laughs> Comment down below how many times we say we're going to get there in a minute or the good guy, Tomatonga. Ding. The good guy. Yeah. <laughs> And I know he's probably going to watch, even though he's in favor of that other website we're not going to mention about. So who cares? Anyway, so for the poll results, so I have 25% people voted G.O.D. to retain. 20% people voted Young Bucks to be the new champ. And 55% people voted L.I.J. as new champ. So, yeah. The people agreed with me. There the you people. go. <laughs> wow. there, Good job, Cass. There you go. Congrats. <laughs> That's my one moment. <laughs> <laughs> awesome enjoy it while you can exactly yeah. but yeah let's go ahead and move on here for the next match the next match we have is the IWGP United States Championship match which you have is the champ Cody R with the lovely Brandy Rose versus Juice Robinson now I see a lot of reports that to some people, especially on social media, that this match is should not be in the in the card for Wrestle Kingdom 13 because they they feel like the match is, is just your regular standards match. But for me, I actually enjoy the match, especially you have Brandy got involved because you know how much she dislikes Juice ever since the whole New Japan Pro Fan Fiesta press conference. Yeah. going on but yeah so overall it was a pretty you're decent match have not a lot to say except you have like when juice was about to do his signature move on a top rope brandy got into the ring and trying to protect cody from him and he saw the ref which is what that ref's name is it tiger something tiger Tori. tiger at tory doesn't know what the hell he, what what to do and all that stuff so so Brandy just like, you know, got out of the ring and she just watched there. So anyway, it was just pretty much a good good spot. Both guys did exchange signature moves like Cody did the crossroads. Juice did kick out. But then Juice did the crossroad while Cody was trying to do the pump, the pump picture later on and all that stuff. But before yeah. that, while Cody was accidentally bumping to Tiger at Tori, the ref, um, Juice was like looking on what's going on. All of a sudden, Brandy did spear Juice and she attacked him. Like you could see, like how much, I was like, "This is just your typical like women's match we all saw in WWE." <coughs> but whatever. <laughs> well, back in the day, but not just till now. All right, because I love the women's division and all that stuff. But anyway. <laughs> so Tiger and Tori doesn't know what to do and all he did is just kick Brandy out of the of the ring. So I think that's like a smart decision. So that way both gentlemen did finish. So at the end, Juice did punch Cody not once but twice. But then he did the first pulp fr pulp friction. But then he did a second one and lo and behold, Juice Robinson is your new IWGP United States champion. Two times, y'all. So Fun. this is First the year. Time. Yep. The year of Juice SC. Juice SC. Now let's go ahead and take it away, Cass. All right. So I'm going to start off by saying the U.S. title, since Omega won it in that tournament at the first G1 special in uh, wherever it was in California, Long Beach. Mm -hmm. The U.S. title just kind of seems like it exists. Sometimes I actually forget that it's there. Mm -hmm. You just kind of... It's just kind of there. It's just kind of hot potato. It's been hot potato around more than anything, I think. Mm -hmm. But for and uh, you guys mostly do all the rundown. You guys take the notes here. I'm just I'm just here to provide my uh, my slick comments and feedback. It's okay. But uh, I, I did love that uh, the little ode to uh, Cody's future venture by wearing the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> theme type. Oh, yeah. um, Way to make it blatantly obvious, Cody. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty curious. If I remember right, I think he's a Cowboys fan or a Falcons fan. I don't know what he's doing mm. wearing that, but it, it was it was what it is. It seemed more like a WWE styled match and not less uh, Japanese style. And it, it was what it was. We, I mean, we all pretty much seen it coming that Cody was going to lose the title to Juice and you know put Juice over on the way out and get his win back. 
Yeah, I mean, I just feel like, say to say at least, like, I agree with you, like, this match feels like, kind of like your standard WWE's match. Like, I'm watching Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura all over again from Survivor Series. But, but overall, it was a pretty decent match. Not too much to say, so at least. And even though Cody and Brandy did wear the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, Get ring gear just to like so show some love to the Khan family, of course. But yeah. Anyway, Noah, do you have anything to add up to it and all that? Yeah, subliminal promotioning for a uh, company that's sure to change the wrestling game, but we'll talk about that later. It, again, it was like you said, your average everyday match we called. I feel like the biggest highlight though for this title since it existed was uh, Kenny Omega versus Jay White. Mm-hmm. Nothing really special. You pretty much covered the entire match. I thought it was okay. Good way for Cody to go out. Glad to see Juice with the title again because he does truly care about. It. He does respect and believe in the future of New Japan Pro Wrestling. He wants to be the guy to represent this title and the four letters IWGP. It's in good hands. Uh, Greece. <laughs> As uh, well, like Kenny versus Jay White is a really good U.S. championship match. Also, Jay White versus Juice Robinson at the G1 Special in San Francisco. That was one of the match of the night over there, like a couple months ago. And I just hope that they'll just showcase like what the U.S. title is going to be about. If they're going to be like heavily promoted there, since like we do have like most of the the New Japan Pro Stars that is like from the states and whatnot, but. We'll see. It's, it's just really weird, like that the U.S. title is. It seems more like the. It's more about the match and less about the title. Mm-hmm. Because if you go back and you know, you wouldn't even remember that uh, Jericho and Omega last year was for the U.S. title because yep. it was like, okay, that title's on the line, really. But it was, and you just you just kind of forget about it. Exactly. It's like a title you forget about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they say the uh, title um, doesn't make the man. The man makes the title. I feel Juice is going to not only make. The matches seem more like worth watching, but the title as well. It's going to be like a prize people will want to go for more, not just something to put on a card. Exactly. And plus, like, Juice Robinson is like one of the ultimate baby face in New Japan Pro since, like, annoying. it is. Yes. Because since now that Cody and the Bugs and Marty and Heyman and Kenny are pretty much like done with New Japan Pro. Now they're focusing more is Juice Robinson, but also with Will Ospreay as well and Zack Sabre Jr., those top guys. And we're going to mention about one more guy in just a minute or so. But yeah, and also again, and drink up people, we're going to talk more about Juice Robinson's next opponent uh, in the next review, which is the New Year's Dash. So yeah. (laughs) Anyway, y'all. For the, going. for the poll results here, we have is 22% voted Cody to retain and 78% voted Juice to be the new champ. So, yeah, we all agree. I, I would have thought that would have been a lot higher, honestly. Is that, <laughs> like, like 100% I mean, or to zero. Did you really see the this title being in all elite wrestling? Nope. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on here. So next up. We have is the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match, which you have is the champ Kushida versus Bullet Club Taiji Ishimori. Now, Noah, take it away. Well, first off, the entrance was ridiculous. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, it was a pretty uh, hard fought exchange. I mean, we had um, some fake out kicks. There was a uh, LaBelle lock, signing German. There was a 450 spot. That was turned into a submission that I thought was really interesting. Key lock, which is always brutal. So many wrestlers depend on that, too. There was so many counters, too. There was, like, a springboard counter. There was a lung blower counter. And then you had a, what they call that kick to the back of the head. I know it has a weird name. I can't think of it. But in the end, we, we kind of got the idea who was winning, even though I went with champ. But it, it was an okay match. And a good win for Taiji with the um, bloody, what do they call it? Bloody Cross. Bloody, thank you, Bloody Cross. Yeah, I thought it was really good. There was a lot of aggression, like I said, because she brought a lot of his MMA background into this. There was, uh, at times, some exchanges, both men trying to uh, push and test each other. I thought it was okay. 
All right. And then anything else you wanted to add up, um, Cass? Uh, pretty much. Like, I, I should have thought ahead of time, like, all those rumors about Kushida to WWE. I should have known they would have put the title on old Bone Soldier. Yeah, gummit. But um, I, I honestly, I'm super impressed with him, especially after that. Um, I think I mentioned in our prediction video the um, the best of Super Junior Finals against Hiromu was out of this world, and I think he may have almost topped it with this one. And mm-hmm. it sucks to see uh, Kushida go if he is going. We'll talk about that later, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you never know. But uh, Kushida is, or not Kushida, uh, Ishimori could really lead the uh, the Super Juniors for the rest of the year, at least until hopefully Hiromu is ready to come back from his neck injury. Um, he doesn't have to be reborn. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, so I feel this match was like a pretty good way to to have like, you know, somewhat of a final hurrah for Kushina in like a singles match um, aspect. Like, overall, his... His theme interest was pretty cute, to say at least. I mean, bringing his, like, whole back to the the future gimmick, first to say. And then the match overall, um, not too much to say. I mean, both guys fight hard for it, especially with Ishimori as well. I mean, he is, let's just dub him the Japanese CrossFit Jesus, because I've been seeing his Instagram story of him doing his CrossFit training and yeah, <laughs> like Seth Rollins yeah. does. Yeah, he's built like someone that doesn't know how to mess with the sli- someone that's messing with the sliders on an old SmackDown game. Oh yeah, he's, he's like walking around like this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and plus you know him bringing back you know what was Bone Soldier supposed to be? Well, Ishimori is the true Bone Soldier. Simple yeah. as that, Noah. Not so. Captain- yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very happy Ishimori did one with the bloody bloody cross to Kushida, and I'm looking for excited to see how he's going to carry on with the junior heavyweight title. Since now that Bullet Club is starting to be more and more impact again, more into that later on. <laughs> anyway, for the poll results here. So I have 46% of people voted Kushida to retain and 54% for Ishimori as new champ. And besides people, I was the only one voted for Ishimori to be the new champ. So, hey, yay. I knew it's going to happen, especially I've been following up with Ishimori's career for quite a while now. He actually improved tremendously, even though he did all right in Impact Wrestling, but who cares? Anyway, yeah. But anyway. It's a great Canadian company. Mm-hmm. I know, but where is it going to go from there? But yeah, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and move on here to the match that is one of the main event match that we were heavily invested. The star of the trifecta. Here yes. we go. Yes. All righty. So we have is the leader of the Bullet Club, Jay White with Gato versus the returning... Old style Kasuchika Okada, known as the Rainmaker. About time Okada went back to his old ring gear, his old music, everything about himself to see yep, at least. Front, hair back, no more balloons. Yep, and let's Perfect. go. Yes, and let's go ahead and start off with you, Cass. Your comments. Well, like you know, I I love that pop when he. Uh, he took the, the pants off and boom, shorts are back, baby. No more. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It just really set the stage for being like, all right, Okada's focused again. He's ready to go. He needs to, you know, put up for everything Jay White's put him through. But before we came on here to film this, we were talking about how I really don't think that this match was given as much time as it should have. And in a way, you know, it makes Jay White look really strong, but it also makes Okada look like weak. You know, you, most old guys that have beaten Okada, it's been 20 minute plus matches. This barely clocked in at 15. And it was just a reversal fest. I'm sure Noah has the old play by play written down there, but Sorry. it's just felt <laughs> like it was like a, it was like a human chess match. They were like reverse, 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 mm-hmm. reverse, checkmate. Oh, yeah. And Noah, let's go ahead and go over with the play-by-play. Okay, I'm going to try here because, so first off, Rainmaker, one of my favorites of all time. So glad the original Rainmaker is back, source included. 
Uh, let's see. So, of course, we get um, them starting off uh, with each other. You had to uh, know there was going to be running basement drop kicks. There was going to be shotgun drop kicks, which uh, Jay White countered a couple of times. There was ghetto interference. There was a Saito suplex. Um, at one point, there was an outside spar where he literally lunged himself in crossbody into uh, Jay White and Gato. And then there was exchanges. There was a DDT spot cover. Of course, that wasn't the end. Um, there was, let's see here, German suplexes, Yuranagi. There was multiple times where both men went for their finishers. Jay White with Blade Runner. Okada, of course, with his uh, Rainmaker uh, lariat. And uh, at one point, a chair was almost brought into play, but that got blocked. We had Snapdragon suplex. Kiwi Crusher led to a near fall. That was a kick out. Switchblade counter to a tombstone. Spinning sit down tombstone. I thought that was it. Nope. I was like, dang it. And then uh, he went for the drop kick, but no, he missed it. And then he went for his Rainmaker base to sum up in the end. And out of nowhere, Blade Runner got him one, two, three. Mm-hmm. That is right. So as you heard, yes. Once Okada was so close to do his last Rainmaker to Jay White. Jay White beautifully counter and did the Blade Runner, and that's how Jay White won the match, which we all predicted that's gonna happen to say at least. But I feel that with this match, because of Okada went back to his old, old ways at first, I kind of sense that, oh crap, Jay's gonna lose this match, how's, and how's he gonna perfect? But nope, Jay knows what to do because for that, I'm very impressed how he came a long way, especially trying to beat like the longest reigning IWGP heavyweight champion, everybody's fan favorite also. And plus with Okada, he has one of the huge reaction from the crowd to say so, right? Yeah, Okada's like one of the biggest faces in New Japan Pro Wrestling. When he came back with the original Rainmaker, it was probably your biggest pop of the night. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see where it'll go from here. I remember in our uh, predictions, I was like, Okada's going to take this match very seriously. There's your definition, folks. Original Rainmaker's back. And I have a feeling this is not over. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, And with this match, it's like you never know if Okada's going to win or if Okada's going to lose. And then what's going to happen with Jay White? Yeah, say, the interesting yeah. thing about this rivalry, you, you're waiting to see when Okada beats him now at this point. Yeah. So, and boy, won't that be a shocker. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, at least, like, Jay White, he proved like, why he is one of the, the top guys in New Japan, especially for heel perspective, too. And especially how he's going to carry New Japan in, like, for the long run. He's going to have, like, a very bright future, which we're going to get into that later on <laughs> at New Year's Dash. So, anyway, for the poll results here is I got... 33% people voted Okada, and 67% people voted Jay White. So, yep, we're all high on the Switchblade himself. And Even the Switchblade. Yeah. Alrighty, so next up we have is no DQ match for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship match, which you have his D-champ. I would call him the GOAT because it's true. Chris Jericho versus mm-hmm, versus the leader of LIJ, Tatsuya Naito. That match, holy crap, this is brutal. But the question that we're going to ask, is this match top it off to last year's match, Jericho versus Kenny Omega? Honestly... Last year's match that Jericho has is slightly better than the match that he had against Naito. Let's go ahead and break it down, Noah. Uh, yeah, I feel like I still like the Omega and Jericho match a little more than this one. And maybe it's just because it was literally just a match. It wasn't like no DQ, for example. But making this match no DQ certainly uh, raised it to a different level compared to my expectations. I mean, again, I uh, remember saying, how is this match going to start out? Well, we found out how it started out. Night so with the uh, quick attack for the bell, leading to um, pile driver and outside table spots, of course, because New Japan Pro Wrestling loves using their tables, which sound like they're much more painful and durable than another company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I mean, what else? What can we say here? Let's see. Uh, Turnpoke pad was used. There was Kendall sticks. There was um, Breaking Ball drop kick. I always rip her at Piranha. You had um, Jericho pulling out classic New Japan wrestling Jericho with uh, Lion Salt. We had um, Cold Breakers. Chairs and chairs and chairs galore. How many chairs are under the ring? Jesus. Uh, you had um, Jericho, I think, at one point throwing a chair. I forget whether it hit him or not. And then there was a suplex onto the chair, which I think Naito got the worst of versus um, Jericho. There was a few near falls here. Um, there was Destito, of course. I think the first Destito didn't do it. And lo and behold, because you already know Naito, how he feels mutually about the Intercontinental Championship. Jericho brought it into play, thinking that would play into the finish, and it did, but not in his favor. Naito mm-hmm. used it in his favor, and it led to a win with a Destino. Oh, Very yeah. good match. It is. So, I mean, Naito winning the IWGP uh, Intercontinental Champion, I mean, it is a pretty... We all know that it's going to happen, that the title is going to switch because of what's going to happen next with Jericho. But yeah, so anyway, Cass, do you have anything to add, comments, all that? I must say, Noah's the king of taking notes here, and thank God for I you. Tried. Mm-hmm. I tried. I missed a couple but I'll talk uh, about them later if needed. <laughs> for, for being 48, Jericho sure loves to beat the hell out of himself when he goes to Japan. Uh, some of those tables, like the DDT on the table on the outside, look friggin' nasty. That's Spike DDT. Oh. Yeah, it's just it's your basic Jericho match, you know, or just beating the hell out of someone in Japan, right? Why not? You know, flip off a couple cameras while you're filming the guy. I think Jericho has done that every ah. single match he's had since he came back to New Japan. Um, but, yeah, it seems like no DQ matches are what Jericho thrives in. Like, his one with Omega last year was also no DQ. Mm-hmm. No DQ. Get that brand out there, no DQ. <laughs> Um, nice. Keep pop. Keep pop. I, I didn't like it more than the. I liked the Omega match last year mm. more, but it still it still lived up to the hype of what it was. Yeah, I mean, i everybody was suspecting like the rematch from Dominion is going to be the one that's going to be top it all off, or if it's going to be better than last year's. But even though it's one of those pretty intense match, but I feel that. There should be a little bit more to it and how they're going to top off. Because, face it, nobody can top Omega versus Jericho's match. I mean, come on. Especially when you have Kenny Omega involved, too. Well, keyword Omega. If you have a match with Omega, that's the one you're trying to top. Exactly. So now we have it's the poll results here. So people voted 21%. Voted Chris Jericho to retain, and 79% voted Naito to be the new champ. So yeah, I mean we're all we all know that what's going to happen next with Chris Jericho since like there's a heavily rumor that he's going to be going to AWE or he's probably going to be going back to WWE because he has like a pretty much a free range um, part time schedule. Which I think but is- on the contrary, <laughs> according to the interview afterwards, where he says Naito is a dishonorable son of a <laughs> with the way he won. Jericho's now saying he wants to go and plans to become IWGP heavyweight champion. I don't think his time in New Japan is done yet. Mm. So, big, so big cat, sorry, me and Kaz, and in accordance to uh, your bold prediction, you might be onto something. Hey, you never know, right? You know, yeah. next year, what, 300 and, well, now when we're filming this, 364-ish, five days from now. Take those six guys and mix it up again. Who knows? At that mm. point, I'm really hoping, you know, maybe Jay White will be champ then. We'll have Jay White Jericho. Young Virtue will just be marking out in his pants. <laughs> I... not... Oh, man. Virtue, Virtue will not know who to pick. <laughs> I know. That's going to be one of the hard questions because he's very high on Jericho and he's very high on Jay White. So that I would be... He... Yeah. <laughs> Prove Jericho can still go. Put Jericho, get Jericho to do the G1. Exactly. That would be a pretty good point to bring up on the no, upcoming No DQ review video, right, Virtue? <laughs> or on his Virtue Rage on Facebook along with Jeff. So, yeah. Big, hmm. big yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on here, which is the main event match, which is the IWGP. Heavyweight Championship match, which you have is the champ, Kenny Omega versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Now, oh yeah. Now, I'm going to say about Kenny Omega's entrance, 
it was very well done. Like at first he came out to his current theme, but then he brought the video game Titan Tron. Because if you guys saw on being the DLE, um Omega did release his project, which is his video game version of how he's gonna get trying to be Tanahashi and his old New Japan Pro theme entrance. Shout out to Undertale, by the way. Incredible video game if you all haven't played it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Omega has been a company with the Young Bucks, of course, and then you have his Tanahashi coming out, you know, with his flashy ring gear. Like, he is ready for the fight. I mean, he is the top ace. But yes, Noah, let's go ahead and break it away. Oh, jeez. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, really, four pages of your the longest match. No. What? What? Well, I don't know. Uh, being the longest match of the night, I mean, ay, ay, ay. So, obviously, both men were going in there for a reason, okay? Kenny despises Tanahashi, but respects him as a wrestler. Tanahashi, he doesn't like the way that Omega is saying the rest of the company should go and his style of wrestling, okay? Mm-hmm. So, a story of redemption versus um, the outlook, if you want to call it that. I mean, there was slap fest, slap fest. We had a Kobo twist, which led to a roll-up. There was submission slaps, big knee... I lost count how many V-triggers were in this freaking match. Um, I counted right. how many V-trigger he did. I think he did five V-trigger. I might be wrong on it, but I counted five. Yeah. I mean, backbreaker led to a kick out. There was high angle back suplex, a springboard moonsault, multiple dragon screw uh, leg whips, which in, in theory is a good way to take out Kenny Omega because take out the speed of Kenny Omega and his legs, he can't pull off the one wing angel. We had um, Charles Crusher, Snap Rana. We had an attempt at Rise of Terminator, which led to a uh, top rope drop kick. We had, of course, those Snap Dragons, which always seem uh, brutal. And then eventually Ace gets his twist and stout going on there. He puts Omega into a brutal submission, Cloverleaf, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, I did not see this coming, he did a Styles Clash. Yep. Did you expect Ace to do a Styles Clash? No. And then, of course, we had the high five, uh, how do they, they say it? High five fly, his first one, counter into knees. So, and then, of course, we had another V-trigger tramp, which was missed. Then we had a draping dragon screw, which looked absolutely brutal. Talk about trying to tear all three tendons. There was um, swing blades. There was, uh, finally, table came to play, because it's a mega match. Go figure. Table has to come into play. High fly through a table, crash and burn. There was a double stomp to the back fall on that point, and then you had powerbomb cover, no. Powerbomb cover, no. Powerbomb cover, no. <laughs> Eventually, you ran into a choke, another V-trigger, and then we had an attempted sling blade as H just would not stay down. He refused to lose. Mm-hmm. Then we had a vicious exchange of just four, four rounds, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Another suplex, more sling blades, another high five flow but it was a one count so you could tell how much kenny omega didn't want to lose what you get after that more v triggers ace just eating them and eating them two more v triggers after that lead to another near fall no <laughs> kick out and then we get uh reverse rana more v triggers another reverse rana from talahashi there was a cross body after a bridge pin another high fly flow you thought that was it no kick out V trigger a super snapdragon superplex, another V trigger, and then uh, one ring angel, which you knew had to come into the finish. It was like this had to be it, right? No, mm-hmm. it countered. He countered into a sling blade, and then high five flow. Doggone you, Cindy! The ace finally won with another high five flow. There is your new champion. What the hell? Is that? <laughs> we were so close to a three way tie. <laughs> super ah. close. Oh my god. I know. Well, I knew that Tanahashi's going to be the one that's going to reign, um, be the new champ because I forgot to mention on the prediction video, if Tanahashi wins, he's going to be the eight-time IWGB Heavyweight Championship holder. Like, that's going to be, I think that's kind of like breaking his title reign to say so, if I'm not mistaken. I got to take a look on the Heavyweight Championship history, but... There you have it. Like, I knew it's because, like, of how it's going to go with, like, you know, with Omega leaving New Japan Pro because of a lot of rumors that's going on, which you guys know I'm very vocal about, but let's not get into that. And yeah, how, and how Tanahashi is going to be the one that's going to carry. Besides, he is, like, in his early 40s right now. So 
with him be having like a very incredible year, this is it. This is going to be him to moment of shine. Love ball. See, he won the match. So overall, I feel this match. It's by far the match of the night, in my opinion. I was so shocked that Tanahashi did pay a tribute to AJ Styles with the stock. Styles Clash. I was like, wow. He is giving a tribute to someone that is currently in WWE, even though when AJ was in New Japan, he was the leader of the Bullet Club, and he was a top heel at that time. Oh, yeah. For that. So, it is a very incredible match. I give so much respect for Tanahashi and for Kenny Omega for putting one hell of a fight for that. And then afterwards... I'm going to bring it. They brought it. Oh, yeah. And then afterwards, um, Tanahashi did give a speech saying, like, you know, if it wasn't for the fan, like, he would have been the champ. And he did his air guitar to his one of his old theme entrance, too, which is, like, a very lovely touch to it as well. So, an incredible way to to finish off with the main event match. So, yeah. So, Cass, do you have anything else to say since I know you choose Omega to retain and, yeah. I did, and you guys pretty much covered most of it. My basis on this was, I, I just thought it would be too predictable to have all the all elite guys lose at the same time. So I thought, hey, yeah. maybe Omega might join them later. Like he'll hold her for like a couple months, maybe lose it to whoever wins the New Japan Cup. Like maybe like Jay White wins the New Japan Cup and do it there. I didn't expect it to happen this early. I was wrong. Um, I did wake up to watch this match live. The rest of it I did go back and watch later. Uh, but it was it was quite the thing to wake up to. And I'm glad I was able to wake up just in time to watch it because this was a classic. Mm-hmm. I would not put it higher than the first Okada Omega match from two years ago. But it was the match of the night. Oh, yeah. 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 So we all agree that this is one of the matches of the night. But not very high to as Omega's incredible matches like from these past years. Like his match against Okada always hit on the high note, to say at least. But yeah, and overall, Russell Kingdom 13 has been a really good start of 2019. We have a lot of moments, a lot of good matches, a lot of like not so good match, but we're not saying worse or at least so ourselves. So yeah, so... For the results that I have for the heavyweight championship match, I have is 40% of people voted Omega to retain and 60% of people voted Tanahashi to be the new champ. But anyway, what's going to be the future holes? But who knows? But that is it for the Russell Kingdom 13 review video. But we're going to be giving our letter grade right now before we're going to cover the aftermath, which is New Year's Dash. So, Cass... What letter grade would you like to give Russell Kingdom 13? Okay. I'm going to give this an A minus solely on the fact that I feel like I said a lot of matches needed more time. And it feels like they took away from a lot of things like the Okada match. All those made, all those three main events should have been at least 20 minutes, at least. You know, maybe there might have been too many matches on the card, but that that's what I feel like really brought it down was a lot of them, even though they did tell the stories and there are a lot of time, it just didn't feel like they got their money's worth in a way. Mm-hmm. All right. And then what about you, Simple Man? I kind of agree with you there. It was a really good show overall. There was not one more where I was bored or felt like I needed to get up and take a break for something or I was like, Oh, guys, look, this match is happening. What else you want to talk about? Unlike some other event, I'm not going to name it WrestleMania. But uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I agree with you, A minus. I definitely feel like, especially the last three matches, well, the Okada J. White match definitely deserved more time. I feel like um, Kashuda and Ishii could have uh, used more time. But again, I was not disappointed, even if I did lose the predictions. It's an A minus for me as well. And I honestly can't wait till next year with two nights. Mm, yes. Well, based on everything that's going on with New Japan Pro, and especially I forgot to mention, there has been like a technical issue for people that could even log into the New Japan World's live stream for Russell Kingdom 13 during the pre-show match, which is kind of like set like a very um, downer for everybody. But at least everybody did manage to catch on to some of the matches as they can able to log in and all that stuff. So with that being said, with like most of the matches, I have to agree with both of you guys. I feel that this match should have been gone 
longer, especially with Kushida versus Ishimori's match. I feel the United States Championship match should have been gone longer if they would have done like a proper storyline to say so not instead of like doing everything in the last minute um the pre-show match is kind of threw me off a bit because we haven't even know that was the elimination match and so far I feel Okada versus Jay White's match should have been a little bit more longer because that's gonna be explaining more of like the whole storytelling with Okada's old ways comeback um that being said I'm gonna have to give it a A minus as well. So yeah. So anyway, you guys, that is it for the review for Russell Kingdom 13. The next day after Russell Kingdom 13, every year in New Japan Pro, they held New Year's Dash, which is kind of like you know, the Monday Night Raw after Mania, but they're trying to make it into the whole big deal because that's where it leads to everything that's gonna be, um folded after Russell Kingdom. So we're going to be starting off with the opening of the match, which you have is the team of Suzuki Gun, which is Killer Twat and Takashi Isuka versus Rapongi 3K. It is a pretty good match to say at least. I mean, both guys are in it to win, especially, well, Isuka's mask scared the crap out of me. Myself. I mean, his... <laughs> I know who's vicious, him or Minoru Suzuki. But <laughs> mm. anyway, so far, I mean, you saw like a lot of people going back and forth. You saw Rock and Roll did the forever close line to Lance Archer as Lance was, as um, Romero was about to die, but then Archie did caught him and then he did the of course, the rock bottom style drop. So yeah, <laughs> and then you saw that that um, Izuka, which I, yeah, Izuka was got his mask off as he was starting to bite Rapongi 3K's head. Yeah, he did bite Show's back of the head, Yo's back of the head, and Rocky's back of the head. I was like, what is it with him and biting people? Like I just don't get it. And then he proceeded to bite Rocky's hand, of course. And then, right. of course, you saw Suzuki Gun did the double team power slam to to Yo. And once they were about to pin him, Sho did break the pin. And then you saw it's a lot of craziness. Like Killer Elite Squad did almost did a killer bomb, but Sho did the missile um, drop kick, and then a lot of trio kicks on Rapongi 3K and all that. And then at the end, um, Yo did roll up Isuka and team of Rapongi 3K won. And that's when everybody went um, starting to run off because Kill Elite Squad and Isuka were mortifyingly PO. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Noah, let's go ahead. What do you think of the match? And do you have anything to add it that what I missed from the notes? Uh, no, I think you pretty much got it. You talked about the big spot, the uh, trio of uh, knees and kicks, the biting, which is ridiculous. Yes. Uh, there was double suplex roll through at one point, and yeah, surprisingly, Yo did uh, Rapunga 3K. They did it again. They won, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting because um, their last match was uh, in May, and Rapunga 3K won that as well. I believe there was a different ref used here, too, because they said that Tiger uh, Hitori was doing, like, a fast count, I believe. So maybe uh, Suzuki Gun fought that would play in their advantage as well. I guess not. You basically covered uh, this match. I thought it was okay. All it tells me is that this is just going to further and further PO uh, Suzuki Gun. I feel like it's honestly going to be their gear because of how angry they are. Because they're going to destroy everybody. In oh. a post-match uh, interview from... Uh, Wrestle Kingdom, I believe it was, uh, was it, uh, Lance Archer, I think, who said, um, now we're mad, now everyone dies. And then Lance, uh, David Boy, sorry, David Boy at some point said, um, silence is golden, but duct tape is silver. So you try and interpret what that means. Oh, yeah. All this tells me is, if you aren't in Suzuki Gun, good luck. Yeah, which we're going to talk about the whole Suzuki Gun faction later on. Now, Cass, what do you think of this match? Do you have anything to add? So, first of all, I will say that some of these matches I did not watch in full as I just watched the show, like, about an hour before we went live here because I had to work this morning. Mm. But 
um, that match as a whole was just, I believe, leading into what we were probably going to think about Suzuki Gun. What you guys are saying is they're just going to run hell all over the company and just meet up whoever they want, start fights with whoever they want, and just be pissed off the entire year until they get respect that they need. And it's it, it was what it was, you know, just throw some guys out there, get the point across, how mad they were. And uh, on what Noah said, I believe I seen it was Chris Jericho's Instagram that I think wow, Wrestle Kingdom was Tiger Hattori's last card. Mm-hmm. That he ref- and uh, yeah, and the referee in that match was, I believe, a guy they got from Rev Pro to come over from England. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was um, interesting. But um, yeah, Suzuki Gun. I wonder if they're going to get exiled again. And I don't know if that would make matters any better either. Hmm. They're just putting out those bands like they did on uh, the the suspensions, like they did with uh, Bullet Club or yeah. Fire. Oh yeah, but we'll see what's going to happen. Yeah, and then about Tiger Tori's last um, roughing because he is going to retire. I mean, it is bittersweet to say it. Besides, at least I, well, I, I'm glad that me, Aaron, Mr. Spiffy, and some of the NoDQ.com Galaxy member did witness um, Tiger Tori's roughing one of the match at the G1 special. So thank you, guys. Shoes. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you, Tiger Tori, for everything. And yeah, alrighty. So let's go ahead and move on to the next match. You have is the tag team match with you have is Yujiro Takahashi and Chase Owens with the lovely Peter versus Tomaki Homa and Toa Henari. Like I said, people, we're trying our best to pronounce some of the people's first and last <laughs> names, so bear with us. Um, not much to say about this match. I feel like this is like your pretty much your interesting tag team match for both of them. But the only thing that was pretty impressive is while while Al- almost was holding Henry, Peter started to bitch slap him hard. So that was like a pretty. I kind of laughed off because you know you have his Peter as like a hottest go go dancer, one of Yujiro's girls, but then she got involved a bit, so it's like, mm, not bad. And then um, you have a lot of back and forth going on, and then at the end, um, Chase with the package, pile driver to Hinari, and team of Takahashi and Owens won. And afterwards, um, Owens did stated that Chase Owens is the new 2019. This is going to be his year, and all that good stuff. So, um, we're gonna get into that later on about what happened like later on. So no, can do you want to add like anything that I missed from the notes? Uh, I mean, there was a Fishman Buster. Uh, the funniest thing I saw was definitely when uh, Chase went for the uh, Kokeshi, and then the commentators were like, "You need to look into the trigonometry and physics of how that's properly done." I thought that was uh, pretty entertaining. I find it interesting how Toa and Tamaki are looking to face each other in a one-on-one match. I'm actually hoping if that does happen. Mm-hmm. I thought they were. Uh, Pretty well as a team tonight, but nah, not nothing really special. I mean, the biggest thing, like I said, there was Kokashi's, Virgo Suplexes, uh, Fishman attempts, Pieta, as you said, slapping the daylights out of yep. uh, Toa. Good grief. Uh, Samoan drop and Rofu transition, but in the end, uh, Package Power Driver chased the win for his team. It's a new year, new chase. Yeah, we'll see what that holds mm-hmm. in store. Yep. And then any comments, Cass? Well, I mean, pretty much from what I saw, I did skip around this match just a little bit just to see what happened in the end, and it will lead to what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember next or two matches from now, but yeah. we'll be getting into that. You know, I know I'm good. Good for Chase Owens. He's uh, he's represented by uh, Squared Circle Apparel, which makes amazing shorts, and I love those mm-hmm. guys. So I love Chase Owens. So plug. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Chase Owens is a very down-to-earth guy. I actually met him at, in L.A. during the GCW show, which I'm not going to talk about it a lot. But, yeah, he is a pretty cool guy. And I did ask him, like, he was stuck in the middle. He was unsure. But I'm going to talk about it later on. Two more matches about what's going to lead up to. But, yeah, so I see a lot of promising future for Chase Owens. I mean, he come a long way. Hopefully this year, this is going to be the year of Chase Owens. Maybe we're probably going to see like a future title shot to say so, but who knows. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on here. So next up you have is another tag team match, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Which you have is... Tag Team Arama. Well, oh, yeah. Long eat your heart out. Yes. So a tag team match, which is 
Team Best Friends, which is Beretta and Chucky T versus your IWGP United States Champion, Juice Robinson and David Finley. So this match is pretty much a very fun and heartfelt match, to say so at least. I mean, you have his Beretta's mom watching the match, and then during the match, Beretta did got out of the ring, went up just to hug his mom, which nice. it's really nice. And then, <laughs> and then Chuck Taylor or Chucky T, whatever I call him, Chuck Taylor. He was like, "What about my hug?" And then Brodo was like, "I give you a hug already." So this is really funny. So overall, the match was pretty good. I mean, Juice and David Finley did the double drop kick, then a dive, and then of course they hugged each other not once but twice. But Juice was about to kiss David, but was like, "No, too far." <laughs> too far. Too far. I mean. Juice Robinson, I mean, he loves to be more, to be flamboyant, especially like showing the love for everybody, like the audience and to the opponent as well. And then you have this Finley um, did the drape on the barricade and Beretta did the double stump onto to Finley, which is like pretty brutal. Mm. And then Juice was about to do the pulp friction, but... Brett, I did counter with the shotgun kick. And unfortunately to see is um, white where it was so close for David Finley to do the finisher. Um, Chucky T hit him with the steel chair. So this match ends in no contest. And then after there's like a lot of beat down from team best friends as well. So Noah, can you add any more detail on the notes? Uh, well, you talk about the hug spot. You talked about the attempted kiss. So there's the uh, comedy bits right there. First mm-hmm. off, David Finley, kudos to him on being in the commentaries where it's the winniest wrestler of uh, 2018. Mm-hmm. And Beretta, I know, wants to challenge Juice S.A. at some point for the uh, IWGP United States Championship, as was specified in the post-match uh, Wrestle Kingdom uh, interview. I believe this match was um, a rematch from the end of the World Tag Team thing, because mm-hmm. it ended in uh, DQ, if I remember correctly. Uh, there was dual bulldogs, some slaps. There was, like you said, a shotgun drop kick. There was a cannonball at some point. There was step up insecurity. There was a pole friction attempt. And we got the tag from Finley towards the end, like you said. Back break over knee. What happens? Chuggy just lunges the chair right into Juice's face. DQ. He snaps. We get a pile driver by Chuck for some reason to Finley. We don't know where those two stand. I really don't know what Beretta can do about Chucky, but something needs to give. Hmm. Cass, what are your thoughts about it? I know you kind of, like, follow with the Chaos team, so. Yeah, like, I mean, Chaos is honestly in shambles. I, I feel like, come, if we're talk, if we're doing this review a year from now, Chaos won't even be a thing. Hmm. Um, uh. So, basically, it's like, you know, Chucky e. T is losing his damn mind, and I feel like this is what's going to start to uh, break him away from chaos and probably become a serious wrestler because Chuck Taylor has been a comedy wrestler pretty much his entire career. And this might be, uh, this might be it for uh, old Chucky e. T. And that, um, when I, I did laugh when he ran back in after they're walking away and he ran back in to Paul drive David Finley on the chair. And that looked brutal too. It was mm-hmm. a snap Paul driver. Ooh. Yeah. Just yeah. Snap, just dropped him. Yeah. Oh Yeah. Yeah, it's just from judging from it, I feel like with this year, like Team Best Friend is going to be going at it hard, especially like, you know, with the whole chaos going all over the place. Like ever since the whole what happened with Jay White until lo and behold, what's going to happen. And so it looks like for the next contender spot for the IWGP United States t- title that Juice is going to have to defend, it's going to have to be Beretta. But in personal opinion, I feel that after Beretta, it's going to be, of course, Chuck Taylor, whatever. I mean, I'm not a fan of Chuck Taylor, Chucky T, (laughs) whatever. Just don't get me started. But, yeah, I just feel like one of those guys are going to be the one that's going to be the one that's going to be the challenger for Juice Robinson. But, of course, everybody's very high on Beretta. I mean, you see that there's, like, a bit of a sign going on with Beretta's alter ego and then Chucky T. I mean... He needs to go into, like, more of, like, higher heel. I mean, both guys, though. I mean, ever since Beretta, like, left WWE and then coming into New Japan, I feel like he needs to have it more and more into the opportunity. And this is it. Like, the United States Championship title needs to be the one that he got to compete against Juice. So we're going to have to see what's going to happen next. But 
if Beretta and Chucky T, after their like brief feud with Juice, probably for the IWGP Tag Team Championship match against LIJ. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's move on on here. Next up, we have is the six man tag team match. Yay! <laughs> what you have is the team of Yushika Nagata, Jeff Cobb, and Kushida versus the team Chaos, which is your new never open weight championship champion, Will Ospreay, along with Tomohiro Ishii and Hiroki Goto. Hmm. Noah, can you take it away with with this match? So uh, it started off hot and quick with the two people I think that really carried the match, Kushida and Will Ospreay. Uh, exchanges of attempted uh, headlocks and arm locks. There was a running shooting star press into a cover that was beautiful, by the way. Then we got tagged into a slap fest uh, to Tomo, which, of course, you slap in Tomo most of the time. What is it? Ineffective. But those kicks weren't. There was a single slap to uh, Kushida. There was another cover after, um, what was it? He locked him in the bathroom. There was like an exchange. There was a headbutt. That's what it was. Headbutt to uh, Nagata. Uh, I mean, there wasn't really a, there, there was a lot of fast pace action, but really I was looking more at Kushida and Osprey's spots because it was just as fun to watch those two as it was um, Osprey versus uh, Ibushi. Uh, there was springboard handspring, double elbow. There was um, some more exchanges with forearms. There was a shidome, I think they called it, at some point. Cobb was impressive. There was tags to go to mm-hmm. Cobb. Both men just colliding into each other. Who could yeah. knock the first one down first? Uh, eventually, both of them knocked each other down. Mm-hmm. Then who we got again? We got tags to uh, Kishida and Osprey. And an attempted os cutter, which I thought was really cool how this was avoided. Cobb caught him. And then Cobb suplexes Kushida onto Osprey. But in the end, we got DDT, Tomas, a corkscrew, pump kick, Stormbreaker, and Team uh, Chaos with the win. Yeah. The only thing I wanted to point out is that kind of made me laugh is when Osprey did um, say to Nagata, You're effing old man. Oh, yeah, just, was, it was like a pretty hilarious moment for that. Um, overall, I feel this match is pretty good. I honestly feel that like Jeff Cobb has even done match because like he has been tagged in like almost halfway through the end of the match. I mean, he did like a pretty impressive job, especially how he faced off Hiroki Goto. Like, I feel that this is kind of like a similar um, similar match to these two at the G1 special. Yeah, where Hiroki Goto used to be the never overly champion at the time and um, yeah and the only thing that's kind of like impressive is the counter between Nagata and Ishii because they had like a history of the few together so yeah I'm actually gonna see what's going to happen next with Nagata and Ishii in the long term because like you have like after the match like Nagata Ishii was like bump, like beating the hell out of each other and then both of them were trying to like break off the fight so yeah. I feel like this is going to be like the next feud in the making that's going to happen, especially which both, of course, veterans of New Japan Pro. Now, Cass, do you have any comments to add? Uh, not much on this one. It's kind of one of those ones I did skip most of. I probably should go back and watch it. Eventually, I will get to it. Don't give me that face, though. I will do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it's okay. But, uh, you know, Nagata, I honestly thought he retired a couple of months ago, because I know they said he's not going to compete in the G1 anymore. And, you know, after Ishii, give him a couple of young guys and see him on his way out. Because uh, he's, I think he's almost on the end of his career. But uh, Jeff Cobb is one strong dude. Mm-hmm. And I really wish that New Japan would give him a good singles run. Because uh, I think he deserves it. I agree. I mean, Jeff Cobb recently signed with Ring of Honor. He's your current Ring of Honor's television champion. And he is one impressive guy. I mean, I've just seen Jeff Cobb, like, so many times at All Pro Wrestling, like, with his suplexes, his tour of the island finisher. I mean, everything about Jeff, I mean, he is a really, like, one of those top talents that i actually looking for, up to. And that being said, I agree that he should have, like, more of, like, a singles run as well. Yeah, yeah. he even did great as the Monster Matanza in uh, Lucha. Oh, yeah. So oh, true. yeah. Matanza Cuerto. Yep. I'm, I'm off topic. I hope we do get a season five for that uh, promotion. But yeah. 
Moving on. I hope that I, I feel like, yeah, you're right. Also, pointing out what you said, Cindy, before we recorded, this probably is Kushida's send off because you saw at the end the mutual <laughs> sign of respect between Kushida and Osprey. Yep. If it is, Kushida, thank you and good luck in hopefully uh, wherever you go. <clears throat> WWE, but I hope not. <laughs> yeah, you, yes, ask what no witness uh, saw or say. Same thing with everything. Um, <laughs> Osprey and Kushida did fist bump together just to show sign of respect. So this is. Kushida it's possibly his final New Japan Pro run and as I stated there's a rumor that he's possibly going to be in WWE so who knows maybe we'll see him in the audience during TakeOver Phoenix but time mm. would tell y'all but yeah and actually and once again we're going to see what's going to happen next between Nagata and Ishii so oh well anyway moving on here so next up we have is a title match which is for the Number six man tag team championship match, which you have is the champ bullet club consists of Taiji Ishimura, who is your current IWGP junior heavyweight champion and Gorillas of destiny consists of Tonga Loa and the good guy Tama Tonga, which my dogs don't like <laughs> <laughs> versus, um, team of Ryusuke Taguchi and most violent players. So before we get into this whole breakdown and stuff, Cass, do you have any comments to say and stuff? Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure uh, Noah will get into what happened here as we were talking about earlier at the end of this match, which led us into them things. I, I do, I wasn't sure if it was this show because it kind of all blended together or the other one, but uh, Taguchi was calling them. He's like, no, we're Taguchi Japan. I don't know about Great Bash Heel. We're Taguchi Japan. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, you know they're good. They're good comedy wrestlers, and I'm I'm glad they didn't win because they should just be that comedy wrestlers. And you got to keep Bullet Club with at least one title for right now. Oh yeah. Give us a play by play, Noah. Mm-hmm. So for it. So we started off with uh, Makambe and uh, Tonga. There was a test of endurance. Um, uh, there were shorter tackles from uh, Tonga. Makambe answers back a little bit back and forth. Neither man pretty much got the advantage we charged. We got tags out to uh, Yano and the good guy. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and then you had Yano with the uh, Kendall stick and then there was a lot of tags actually in this I was quite surprised mm-hmm. tagged to Taiji and uh, Tonga which led eventually to a cover there was Irish whip to a turnbuckle Yano taking off the freaking turnbuckle pad still Classic. not knowing what to do with it freaking hilarious uh, at one point the good guy apologizes <laughs> this whole good guy thing by the way is throwing me way off uh, but and you could tell he was definitely trying to be the good guy because instead of throwing him into the exposed steel corner, what he do? He throws him into the non-exposed, and they're like, "What are you doing? We're here to win! We're here to win!" Eventually, there was a float over a cover, um, and then he ends up getting bit for it by getting thrown into that uh, bad turnbuckle. <laughs> and of course, we had the tag to Taguchi, which what's his specialty? People freaking hip attacks. Oh, He's hip attacking yeah. everybody. They're going for the Bumbaye. We get three suplexes and the third, well, try to get the uh, Tres Amigos, but the third one was countered. And then, of course, we get uh, Yadel with his candlestick in the play, which led to um, Angle Lock, Row Through. There was a springboard in Seguri, which is always a fun spot. Another set attack to Tonga and Makabe. There was a brutal clothesline that led to a near fall. And then, of course, um, Yano came into play, not with a candlestick this time, but with a chair. Ishii pulls the ref. And then his attempt with the chair, what does he get? He got a low blow for his effort. So we get double clothesline DOD by Makabe. And Yujiro and Chase I, come into play, which really was the story to this match because of what happened afterwards. And eventually, in the end, we get a package pile driver, the chance to obtain. And what happens afterwards, folks? Bullet Club for life. Yujiro and Chase are back in. Yep. Didn't even have to get new gear. Exactly, because the obvious ring gear that we saw up close during the first match, well, is it first match or s- whatever, one of the first or second <laughs> match, <laughs> um, uh, up close, Bullet Club, Bullet Club, Bullet Club on their vest and on their pants, so yeah, no surprise that like... And yeah, no she- one saw that coming, Yeah. Right? I not know. even the good guy. Exactly. It's not a surprise that Yujiro and Chase are rejoining Bullet Club, even though, like, you have is the good guy, Tamatanga, give both of them a hug. He's like, I forgive you. I forgive. I'm like, oh, my God. 
enough of this good guy gimmick. Yeah. We know you're not the good guy, mm-hmm. even though you say you're trying to be a good guy. Yeah. You're turning a new leaf because a bad guy yes. uh, gimmick didn't take you far. Yes. And even uh, Tonga begrudgingly said, um, I'm also turning over a new leaf. Right. right. Yeah. And how many times Tonga... Tama Tonga say I'm a good guy. Did he say it like five times total during the match? Five or six, I counted. Okay. Gotta get it over. Yep. So overall with this match, I feel that this match is just one of those comedy matches, especially with most violent player and Ryusuke Takeuchi. I mean, there's a lot of shtick to it of it. But the only thing I would say is Takeuchi did the um did the three amigos until Ishimori did counter. But then right. afterwards, you have is Jado hit hit him with the kendo stick. Yep. Yeah, which is like, hmm, oh well. You saw the good guys' reaction to that. <laughs> no, I know, right? They're like, oh. And then you have his uh, Tangaloa say to Takuji, "I'm going to f up the world." F up your role, I mean. So it's like, yeah, yep, I, you gotta I, add. I, some... I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. So overall, what Noah said. Um, Ichimori did attack the rep, and then Jado got into got into the ring, and I t- think he attacked one of those players. See, that's the thing about this match. Even though with comedy matches, you tend to forget here and there and all that. But yeah, so yeah. overall, like with Chase and Jiro got into the ring and then attack, and then that's when Tangaloa did his finisher, and that's when Bullet Club retained the never um, six man tag team champion. Ship. So, welcome back, two members. Oh yeah! So, welcome back once again, and I'm looking forward to what's going to happen with Bullet Club, which we're going to get into that in a minute or so once we talk about one of the matches. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, let's moving right along. Which we have is another eight man tag team match. Holy or whichever i don't know it's the lost count okay we're just gonna say we have team versus team match let's just say that for easy part the clash of the teams that's right so you have is lij consists of taisuya nato evil sonata shingo tagagi and bushi versus suzuki gun Minoru suzuki um sex saber jr yoshinobu kenmaru ed desperado and Tai Chi, which is Zack Sabre Jr.'s ring announcer. Yep. Holy crap. I would say this one of this was one of them the match of the night. A lot of brutality that's happening. <laughs> Noah, can you break it down? Uh, I'll try. But first off, let's look at the motivation of this match from one team Suzuki gun, but Nora Suzuki being on the pre-show, biggest embarrassment of his life. You could tell this team was going in here for blood. And everybody dying. Because what happens immediately before the bell rings? The loudest chair shot I've heard in a long time. Mm. Laid out, Naito. <laughs> and then uh, you just get chaos all over the ring. Uh, Shingo takes down uh, Taiji. Tags Desperado with some tag offense that led to a cover by Bushi. Who ended up using uh, his shirt to an extent to try and choke the guy out. Mm. Then we get... There was like two or three more breakdowns in this match. Um, there was still single submissions on uh, Bushi, Minoru, and Zach from uh, Minoru and Zach. Two submissions on a single guy, though. I don't, I don't recall um, seeing that in a long time. And then, of course, you get Minoru tagged in, who's just smiling and laughing for all of this. And Desperado's mask almost getting taken off. You got uh, Yoshinobu. My apologies again, people. Kemaru. Thank you. Blah. Uh, try uh, in a half crab. There was more breakdown. There was, um, let's see, there was Insiguris, there was Paradise Lock, which is always a fun spot. Uh, Zack Saber Jr. with a uh, Dragon Screw uh, Lake Suite. There was a Gosh Style Pile Driver uh, counter at one point. Um, there was Cobra Twist. There was Stomps to the Wrist because, you know, that's a uh, Zack specialty. Full Nelson, uh, Turning Twist. There was a uh, Evil Fisherman Buster. Naito somehow gets back into this match a little bit. And pulls up a pulls off a step up DDT. And Lij gets a little bit of an advantage. And there's a three on one on Taiji for a while. There's a clothesline spot that led to a cover. But in the end, there was a black manifesto that happened for them to win. 
so, yeah, it was a very brutal match. I basically looked more at the chaos versus the in-ring action because I was still stunned by that uh, chair shot. And I think now we know what's next as far as uh, that IC title, which also came into play. And once again, bit Naito. Oh, yeah. So, Cass, what do you think? I love a good brawl, and this was the one I was most forward to after kind of like looking at Twitter posts and different online while I was at work. Because how often do you see in New Japan the guys go oh, back and like brawl out there? It doesn't happen very often in a company. And so that was something like a little bit of special you got. That first chair shot, as Noah said, amazing. Great start to the match. Great start. That like that boom started right there. Um, oh. I, I don't know how I feel about Tai Chi, Lord Tai Chi, as the internet calls him, <laughs> uh, being the next challenger for the IC title. But, I mean, we'll see where it goes. I mean, you can't have the first guy go to the gate against Naito be, like, a huge player. So why not give him a little feud, see what happens? Yeah. I have to agree because with, with, after Tai Chi did issue a challenge to Naito, I feel it was, like, too soon to say, but, like, give it a little bit of feud. But, like, the feud. Suzuki Gun versus LIJ because LIJ got the most title wins out Correct. of the faction. And now you have the Suzuki Gun, which, you know, they're still pretty PO'd except for Zack Sabre Jr. because he's the, um, the, the British heavyweight champion. And plus the whole kickoff pre show that happened at Russell Kingdom, I feel like they just needed to be more step it up. And that's how they prove it to say. Like with that, also with Kill Elite Squad and. And I forget that one, that one wrestler that with the scary mask, Iska. Sorry, you guys, because it's the long preaching just, video. I know this is going to be one of the longest review video yeah. we ever have because of two shows. Yeah, we might be breaking the NoDQ.com uh, record here. Yeah. <laughs> we the actually... NoDQ breaking barriers, just like Suzuki Gun breaks people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe breaking, like, the record... No DQ live stream from Survivor Series. But anyway, we went off topic. But yeah, so yeah. I feel that Suzuki Gun versus LIJ, this is going to be the feud in the making. As it this is. might be your feud of the year right here because you keep saying, Cash, this is going to be LIJ's year. I forget this is going to be Suzuki Gun's year right here. And I mean, you saw the first chapter of it at New Year's Dash. LIJ completely laid out. Yeah. But yeah. Man, we're going to be looking forward to that. But yeah, so anyway, let's go ahead and move on here for the main event match, which is six-man tag team match. Good uh, old tag teams. Which you have, you. yep. The team of Bullet Club consists of Bad Luck Fale, Jado, I mean, Gato, I keep mixing it, Gato, and Jay White versus the team of Chaos, which is Okada and Yoshihashi which he made his return after his injury. Mm -hmm. And your current IWGP heavyweight champion, Hiroshi Tanahashi. And let's go ahead and break it down, Noah. I know you have something to say. I, I, I uh, enjoyed this match. It was good seeing uh, Yoshi back. I'm, I'm still glad that the original Rainmaker is still staying. Outfit, song, look and all. Uh, let's see. So... Obviously, Gato, you knew he was going to play into this. What does he do? He tries and attacks uh, Okada and Jay White, who start off this match because uh, Gato gets from behind. But Jay White, he wants the champ. Uh, there was some false communication at one point uh, with Bullet Club, which led to attack to Yoshi. We had some uh, drop kick into a cover. And then Gato, who surprisingly was more involved in this match than I thought he would be, not just from outside a distraction standpoint either, but uh, in ring. He goes for a cover, doesn't get it, and then he just rakes the hell out of Yoshi's eyes for, like, what felt like 10 or 15 seconds, and then tags in uh, Bad Luck uh, Fale, and then that was short, but I think that was just more just to beat down Yoshi, who took the most punishment in this match. Uh, and then uh, Gato comes back in, Yoshi kicks him, and then Yoshi tags Okada, who just brings this match to a whole nother level, nice and hot. We get a DDT, uh, we get a knee to the back, uh, Fale back in play, though. There was, like, a bad drop cover, attempted grenade that was into, of course, the drop kick. Um, there was a dragon screw. Uh, and then you get the uh, champ into play, which uh, was fun to see, which Jay won. And Jay comes out of nowhere to um, just exchange uh, forearms with him, which led to uh, dragon screw uh, leg sweep. There was suplexes. A uh, ton of sling blade. Yoshi comes back into play, and 
let's be honest here. We kind of saw who was winning here based on the direction of uh, what we see New Japan coming into. If someone was going to take the fall, it was going to be Yoshi. So Okada, he gets a little bit of vengeance uh, from Gato as Okada and Tana take out uh, Gato and uh, Fale. But there's a Yurinagi, Okada, Fale, Tana. They're still browsing about. We get Twist and Shout from the ace. But... There's a clothesline into a, what is it, near fall, I think? Yeah, clothesline and power slam into a near fall. And in the end, Jay White, he gets the win with a switchblade on um, Yoshi. So it, was a match. it is a good match, and especially like the post interview where Jay White did state it, and he did it on the promo that, that Bullet Club is going to be the most dominant, and right. he wanted to issue a challenge. Or the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, which yeah, I think this that's front error. I am real. Be- Bullet Club is real. That's <laughs> right. And Cass, you have anything to say? You can add uh, a lot. You know, there's a lot to follow in this one. You know, there's a couple different stories. You know, yeah. Uh, Okada and Tanahashi teaming. Is that the first time that's ever happened? Does anyone know? Mm, I. I- I think so, actually. Yeah. No, it works it's out that way. With Jay White, the old what they say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So mm-hmm. that's uh, that's what's going on there. That was a nice little story. I've seen the, uh, the the gif after watching it, too, of uh, Okada doing the dragon the dragon screw and Tanahashi giving him the thumbs up, like an approving dad. Yeah, they both gave thumbs up to each other at the points in the match, which was a pretty fun spot. But, yeah, yeah super, super kick, suplex, pile driver. Jay White with the Wayne Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, Yoshihashi. It's good to come back. You know, he's always been Chaos's pin guy, so good to welcome him back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is a pretty much a shame that Yoshihashi is the one that's getting the most beat down. I honestly feel that Yoshihashi should have waited, like, a little bit longer just to come back to New Japan Pro from his injury. Because judging from, like, his... from. A little bit of his well-being that I feel that he just needed to like to progress a little bit more. But hey, at least it's good to see him back and with his haircut as well. But yeah, and the question is, there's a lot of question is like the number one, what's what's next for Okada? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I honestly feel like what's next for Okada is I feel like he needed to go with a different feud. But there's like rumor that he's possibly going to have a feud against Guido because Guido was one of his top, his top manager, his, top his friend. father, his friend, like a father figure, you know. And then once Guido joined Bullet Club along with Jado and Jay White and Robbie Eagles, um, you see that Okada was like really felt more betrayed. So I think that's going to be one of the next feud. Who knows? But there may be a lot of feud going on with what's going to happen with Okada now that his old Rainmaker um, character is officially back. But yeah, and then regarding with Jay White, I'm actually really looking forward to what Jay White's going to be stand out to because he is the top guy out of New Japan Pro. Like I feel that they're they're actually filling up the voice since now that Ely is officially gone with New Japan Pro. And then you have those like other stars that's kind of like, like coming from the Western side, like JY, Will Ospreay, Zack Sabre Jr., Juice Robinson, even add um, Beretta and Chucky e. T to the mix as well. And that's how they're going to bring in more of the cult, of, you know, the whole cultivation of like these guys. And then we have more of the Young Lions guys too, yeah. which I'm actually looking forward to the debut, televised debut of Carl Fredericks. So, yeah. So, do you guys want to add anything else to say? Well, going after what you said about the uh, post interview, what happened in the end to basically set up what you kind of are saying? He calls the champ back in the ring, says, "Come on, old man, you know I'm better than you." And what happens? Even the commentators are cautiously saying, "Don't go in the ring." Bullet Club lays him out. Okada tries to come in for the save. Bullet Club lays him out as well, and Jay White stands tall. Mm, oh yeah. I, so I, think I mean, I to... oh, go, go ahead, ahead. go ahead, Chris. Okay, well, I think if I had to call anything, it's like what you said, Cindy, where Okada will face Gato. I'd say it, it, the only way you can book this is that Okada gets like 10 minutes with him, and Gato gets in zero offense. Just, <laughs> he, 
crap. Mm-hmm. Out of him. <laughs> he literally just squashed him, so he yeah. never shows up again. And then you want to get Okada back? He needs to win the New Japan Cup in March. Oh, yeah. Well, if Jericho wants to go after the heavyweight title as well, allegedly, yeah. this might lead into what you want, Cass, where if Okada finishes Gato, we might get a surprise attack from Jericho. You never know. Anything can happen, right? It all depends on that Fozzie schedule. Exactly, man. Overall, that is all the rundown from New Year's Judge. And for the grading wise, which we're going to go for the grade real quick. So for all... Guess I'm going to start first. So letter grade wise, even though there's like a lot of tag team matches, which I know Aaron Riv is not a fan of too many tag matches, especially with more than six men tag. Um, I'm actually going to give it a solid... A solid A minus as well. I mean, there's a lot of like more into the story that it is, especially return from Yoshihashi. You have Chase and Yoshiro joining back Bullet Club, and more and more storyline that's going to be developed in a mix for the feud for like future matches. So yeah, what about you, Noah? Uh, there was like what six or seven tag matches in this show. Uh, mm. I lost count. It was a solid show overall, though. I do see a lot of um, stories developing here. Suzuki Gun versus LIJ. Uh, the Ace versus uh, Switchblade. I can see Gato versus Okada. I see, um, what was it, Ishimori versus um, Blue Justice, I believe. Yeah, it was a pretty solid show. I really wasn't disappointed. I thought the comedy bit with that team was kind of fun. But, of course, what that leads to the bigger story of Bullet Club. Just because it told at least some story developing out of every match. I'm going to agree with you, A-. minus. If it wasn't for that, it would have been B+. Plus. Okay. And Cass? I'm going to give it a, a B+, plus just based on a lot of stuff. You know, it's it's a, it's a build-up show. It's like, um, it's not meant to be, like, the show to watch. It's, you watch it to see what's going to happen. You know, it's where all the storylines, it's, it's like restarting the year over, the new season starting. Let's see where it goes from here, but... All the tag matches, even though that is New Japan's thing, unless it's a big show to do lots of tag matches. It felt a little slow at times. The brawl was amazing, and that's what I think gives it a B plus. Excellent. The brawl. Yes. <laughs> All righty. Now, no DQ Galaxy, comment down below. What are your favorite matches, your least favorite, your little gray ways as well? I know this video is going to be a lot because we've been covering both Russell King of 13 and New Japan Pro Wrestling, y'all. And that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Now, go ahead. Before we all go, let's go ahead and give our plug. Starting with the future wrestling trivia challenger champ. The future champ, Cass. I don't know how much that'll hold up, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> basically, you can follow me on uh, Twitter. If you go to nodq.com slash Cass, it takes you right to my Twitter. You can follow me. Go to the old shirt page, buy my shirt, buy anyone's shirt. Buy my shirt, though. It makes me feel good. Anyway, we'll move on here. All right, Noah? If you guys want to follow me, talk about wrestling, WWE, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact, uh, Indie Wrestling, look me up, nodq.com forward slash Noah. As always, folks, support nodq.com. Go buy a shirt at Pro Wrestling Tees. Support your wrestling outlets, big and small. Let's keep growing this wrestling community together. Simple as that. All right, and make sure you guys follow me at nodq.com slash Cindy. That's going to take you directly to my Twitter page where I am very vocal about anything and everything, especially about Omega, if he's going to WWE or not. Yeah, and then make sure to follow me on Instagram at simply underscore C underscore OK. YouTube channel at simply underscore C underscore OK, which I'm trying to post very, very soon, y'all. Just be patient. And on the second YouTube channel at Tyson Poppy Protection. And do not forget, there is a sale going on until January 7th where you get 20% off of everything by typing in Russell Kingdom. So go to nodq.com slash shirts. I'll take you directly to the Pro Wrestling Tea Store. Buy everybody short, like, shirt like Noah's vintage no dq t-shirt Cass has a shirt i have a shirt like this also <laughs> with the ladies of no dq.com where me caitlin and aaron is in it as well with an e and and if you have your want to get your t-shirt i suggest get this the no dq galaxy where you have everybody's name that made the super chat donations we also have team no dq staff in it as well and all the above so yeah, and also other shirts as well. And like do, 
shirts you're both wearing. New Japan Pro Wrestling representing Bullet Club, representing LIJ, and my Suzuki Gun shirt still yet to arrive. Kase ni nare! <laughs> Alrighty. And do not forget, you guys, make sure to stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the latest news in WWE and other independent wrestling news and other wrestling related news and etc. etc. in the world of wrestling. So, anyway, you guys, this is Cindy G, one third of the ladies of NoDQ.com, along with the simple man Noah Foster and your future wrestling trivia challenger champ, oh, Medium yeah. Cast. Yeah, Greg, <laughs> I'm rooting for Cass. <laughs> and hope you guys have a great rest of your day and Happy New Year. Cheers, y'all. Have a good night. <laughs>